rights are directly traceable to the Communist Party of this country, now protected by Supreme Court decisions set forth in this little volume. Uh, why do I speak with a lack of restraint? Do I need to tell you why I am unrestrained? Why I am immoderate? I think not. Let's just establish an order of priorities here before I leave. What shall we do about it? This is the way I set them down. This is what we should do about it. Number one, let's organize the mothers and the fathers of the boys who are fighting in South Vietnam. And I want the first membership card. Let's organize the mothers and fathers in each community to demand that the President of the United States proceed to win this war immediately and bring these boys home. Number two, listen to Wormbrand's broadcast tomorrow a week, and then make a resolution that we shall have no trade or aid to any communist country anywhere on earth. <laughs> Let me tell you, we already won the battle with Congress on this. Congress will not pass an, any law relaxing trade to these Iron Curtain countries because they have heard from the people at home. But I am sad to say that the President of the United States is now proceeding to sell wheat and rice to China and to establish trade relationship with Romania in spite of the fact that it is against the law. Now, what are you going to do about that? He's got a mailing address too, remember, and exercise some of your indignation with reference to him. Paul Harvey pointed out on a radio broadcast while I was waiting to see my son off last Saturday. And we all heard it the last thing we heard together. He pointed out this Hilton Hotel episode, you know, where this uh, man in Chicago made the terrible boo-boo of refusing to let the wounded vets get into the ice capades at the Hitler Hotel because he didn't want the generality of his audience depressed by the sight of these wounds. And immediately the veterans of foreign wars in the American Legion Hall descended upon him with a crescendo of protest. And poor Mr. Hilton and all of his confreres were hard pressed to get out from under. Now Harvey says, well, he held no brief for Mr. Hilton. He's sure it was a mistake. But he says, I'm delighted to find that there is this much pent up indignation in the United States in the interest of patriotism and our troops. He said, for God's sake, let's turn it on the White House and get them to win this war. Next, my friends, and certainly not least, be alert, will you please, for the brainwashing in favor of atheism. Will you please be alert and militant against the imputations that God is dead? Will you please demand that the ministers in your pulpits become indignant at this propaganda? Because it is directed out of Russia and is intended to become the very predicate of the expanse of the communist conquest. Remember, please, in the last analysis, that this is not a political war. This is not an economic war. It is not even a military war. It is a religious war at bottom. And the communist movement cannot succeed in an atmosphere of religious belief and religious practice and religious self-government. Which brings us back to the beginning. James Madison said that this constitutional system could not succeed except upon the predicate of the capacity of the American people to govern themselves. We can keep our civil government limited, my friends, as long as we individually obey the Ten Commandments of God. But only when people govern and restrain themselves according to God's commandments can they afford the great luxury of a government which is restrained against tyranny by enforceable constitutional limitations. The Supreme Court of the United States never mentions this. We've gotten away from the association of God and government in this country, which was uh, uh, frequently repeated in the early days of our republic. The Supreme Court 
at the turn of the century in a decision declared that this was a Christian nation, that every piece of our documented history proved it. Every state of this union begins, with one exception, its constitution with this statement. We, the people of Indiana, grateful to Almighty God for our liberties, do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. We cannot bring the Supreme Court to book. We cannot restore prayer to the schools. We cannot keep pornography off of our newsstands until we re-establish what the Supreme Court years ago decided when it was competent. This is a Christian nation. In God's name and in Christ's name, let's resolve to restore it and keep it that way.